There is a revealing new memoir out tonight from a woman with an epic love life. Linda Thompson dated Elvis and walked down the aisle with Bruce Jenner back in the day. And that's just part of her story. Here's ABC's Chris Connolly. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis Presley and Bruce Jenner have left the building. <laughs> ah, but she's here. Linda Thompson, chronicling with empathy and deep feeling, days with Elvis Presley and the person we now know as Caitlyn Jenner. I think more than anything, it's been a relief for Caitlyn to be able to emerge as her true self. For the rest of us, you know, we love her, we honor her, we respect her. But when I first met her, she was in a Bruce Jenner body. He was just an incredible person, still is. Wed in 81. By 1985, they were raising sons Brandon and Brody here in Malibu. You say this was the happiest time of your life. The very happiest time of my life. My happiness was complete until that day when my remarkable husband came to me one day and said, I need to tell you something about myself. Linda feared it was an affair. It proved more consequential than that. He said, I identify as a woman. It was earth shattering. It was devastating. People can't understand. You must have had some kind of ideas. No, nunca nada, never, nothing. <laughs> They had proclaimed the joys of their union to the world at large. At first, Linda says, she couldn't help but cry out in shock and anguish. I said, uh, have you looked in the mirror? <laughs> because you're not only a man, you're the epitome of the ideal man. Because in my ignorance and in my naivete, I thought maybe this is something we could fix. To say that I was a blithering, pathetic idiot at the time would not be an overstatement. They separated and would divorce. Jenner began hormone and hair removal treatments. One day, the boys came home from a visit to their father's house. And they said, Mommy, we saw Daddy get out of the shower and Daddy has boobs. So my heart stopped for a minute. So I just said, well, Daddy hasn't been working out as much as he used to. And when you stop working out and you've developed a big muscle there, muscles become a little flabby. So that's probably what you saw. Later, Linda would wish Jenner all the best with marriage to Kris Kardashian. I was so elated that Bruce was going to be happy. I'd moved on with my life. Yet Linda says her sons felt neglected by their father, whom she says for years was not a presence in the lives of Brandon or Brody. No matter what you are going through, what kind of turmoil you are experiencing in your life, if you have a child, be a parent, you know? And so there's really no excuse for that, but it's still forgivable. Jenner's rep told ABC News Caitlin was unavailable for comment. I was there for the first game. Yet all of it possibly the backdrop for this exchange with Brody, by then a reality star via the hills, from keeping up with the Kardashians. It's interesting to watch how you are with the girls. Yeah. Well, because it's a, I'm something I'm not really used to. It's, you weren't around. I was a kid, and it's like... Now's not the time to talk about it. It was 2012, Linda writes, when she told Brandon, who then told Brody, about their father's gender dysphoria after so many years of silence. They have since said, Mom, thank you for not telling us, because I think we needed time and experience in life, you know, to understand different circumstances. Those experiences with Jenner, her time with Elvis, and much more, all vividly captured by Linda in her memoir, A Little Thing Called Life. In her glowing youth, Linda Thompson was a college senior and pageant standout in Memphis, where in 1972 she met Elvis, then 37, at a movie theater. And you can't even remember the movie. No. W would you be able to if Elvis Presley were sitting next to you? Right there, as the film screened, things progressed at the rapid rate of the romance in the Elvis classic, Can't Help Falling in Love with You. But I can't help falling in love with if you want to know what it was like to kiss Elvis Presley, just take two big fluffy marshmallows out and with the sweetness and the softness, kiss those marshmallows. He had just marshmallow lips. Moving into Graceland at Elvis's insistence, Linda was by his side for four and a half years. When the king of rock and roll turned 40, he didn't like the view. He started to do what we all do when we're standing in front of a mirror, like, what if I just, <laughs> what about this? <laughs> and I said, honey, you're fine, you're gorgeous. Are you kidding? But, you know, he would not be satisfied until he had talked someone into giving him a facelift. 24-7, 365. 
Linda was Elvis's lover, confidant, confessor, and his caregiver. He said, I'll probably only admit this once, but I have a self-destructive streak. It was evident in a lot of things that he did, but particularly in the way that, he, you know, he abused his body with prescription medication. It would all end sadly in San Francisco during November 1976, his drug-induced spiral compounded by infidelities that he would not own up to. And he would get tears in his eyes and grit his teeth. I love you. In case you ever read or hear about anybody else that I'm with, just know they don't mean anything. I love you. I don't love anybody else. You're my girl. The love poem she'd write for Elvis's eyes only, leading her two decades later to a successful career as a song lyricist, part of the inspiration for this Oscar-nominated song from The Bodyguard. Stay I drew upon my experience with Elvis, who was the male diva of all time, and difficult, and thus the line, stay in my arms if you dare. <laughs> because there's a challenge there when you're with someone who is that famous. And I never knew love like I've known it with you, which I certainly had not <laughs> known love like I knew it with Elvis before or since. Now 66, still in her Malibu home, Linda finds the loves of her past still reverberating in her day to day. Caitlin and I have talked about had she revealed herself 30 years ago, there would not have been the education surrounding the issue today. There would not have been the understanding and the tolerance. Caitlin is trying to do as much as she can to open people's eyes. Her heart's in the right place. I have since said to her, you know, you've got to give yourself credit. You've kicked manhood's butt. For Nightline, I'm Chris Connolly in Malibu, California.